Welcome to Team Mamina Teaching. This is your fourth and final Grade 8 Geography lesson for Term 2 out of a series of four lessons. In today's lesson, we will be looking at the factors that affect temperature, specifically around South Africa and some other parts of the world. When we think of temperature and the heating of the Earth, it's important to note that there are other factors that contribute to heating or cooling the Earth. Yes, in the previous lesson, we spoke about insulation and terrestrial radiation, but in today's lesson, we are going to focus on some other factors that also play a part in the heating or the cooling of the atmosphere. The factors that we will be looking at today are latitude, altitude, ocean currents, distance from the sea, and relief. Latitude refers to how far north or south a place is. Now the line of latitude that you are most familiar with will be the equator, which lies at zero degrees. Essentially, it's in the middle of the Earth. Two other important lines of latitude would be the Tropic of Cancer above the equator and then the Tropic of Capricorn below the equator. Both of them lie at 23 and a half degrees north and south respectively. Some of the main characteristics of the equator is that it is incredibly hot all year round. And also at the equator, the main four seasons aren't experienced. Usually in other countries, they're used to experiencing summer, winter, autumn and spring. But at the equator, the two main seasons experienced are the dry season and the wet season. This is because of the incredible heat all year round. The extremely high temperatures are due to the curvature of the Earth, as well as the angle of the sun's rays. In the Milky Way, the Earth is tilted on its axis, and it turns on this axis for a duration of 24 hours, and this rotation is what gives us day and night. While the Earth is rotating on its axis, it is also revolving around the sun, and this is what gives us our four seasons. And this is the duration of 365 and a quarter days, which gives us our year. Back to the hot equator. Along the equator, the sun's rays mainly strike directly overhead. They strike the equator at 90 degrees. Because the rays are striking at 90 degrees, they have a very short distance to travel compared to if they were traveling to the North or the South Pole. And because of this short distance, it means that there is quite a strong concentration of heat that hits the Earth. The heat is concentrated in a small area and not much of the heat has been filtered or lost. On the other side of the world, we have the poles, the North Pole and the South Pole respectively. We know that these places are very cold, frozen and very far from the equator. This is also due to, as mentioned earlier, the curvature of the Earth, as well as the angle the sun's rays hit the North and South Poles, respectively. The temperatures experienced are due to the angle of the sun's rays. We say that these are oblique rays or indirect rays. Because these rays don't strike directly like the rays over the equator, a lot of the heat is spread out and actually doesn't reach its destination, so to speak. Because of this, the area is slightly cooler the further you are from the equator. Let's look at some places around the world. Kenya, in Africa, is located right on the equator. Kenya's average summer temperature is about 28 degrees Celsius, and Kenya's cooler months average temperature is about 20 degrees Celsius. We can see that Kenya is warm all year round. This is because of how close it is to the equator. Durban in South Africa is known for its heat. Durban lies at a latitude of about 29 degrees south. Another place well known to South Africans is Uppington. Uppington lies on the same line of latitude, 29 degrees south, yet it experiences vastly different temperatures compared to that of Durban. Yes, it has very, very warm summers, but it also has very, very cold winters. So it's important that we consider 
perhaps there are other factors to take into account when measuring temperature and not just distance from the equator. Altitude is defined as height in relation to sea level and sea level is zero meters. As mentioned in the previous video, for every 100 meters above sea level that you move, the temperature decreases by one degree Celsius. So the higher up you go, the cooler the temperature gets. That said, mountainous areas tend to be much colder than those areas that are closer to the sea. Let's go back to our Durban and Uppington example. We recognize that both places lie on the same line of latitude, 29 degrees south, yet their temperatures are so vastly different. So how do they compare or differ in terms of altitude? Durban's altitude is between 0 and 8 meters above sea level, whereas Uppington's altitude is 835 meters above sea level. Uppington is located on what is called the Plateau. Uppington is in the interior of South Africa. So it's clear to see by looking at both places, although they are on the same line of latitude, they have very different altitudes or heights above sea level. And this is what accounts for the great difference in winter and nighttime temperatures. Uppington is cooler because of its altitude. The western side of our country is surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean. The eastern side of our country is surrounded by the Indian Ocean. Now within these oceans, we get different currents and the currents differ in their temperature. And this temperature has an effect on the land. If you've ever been brave enough to swim in Cape Town, you will know that it is freezing, although that seems like a good enough reason not to swim in Cape Town. And if you've ever swum in Durban, you will know that the temperature of the sea is very, very warm, sometimes too warm in fact. The ocean current that flows past the west coast of South Africa is the Benguela current, and this feeds cold, dry air onto the land and it helps with keeping temperatures cool. On the other side of the country, on the east coast of the country, we have what is called the Agulhas or the Mozambique current. And this is a warm current, so it feeds warm, moist air onto the land, helping to keep temperatures warmer. Colder currents originate at the poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. And as they move towards the equator, the currents get warmer. The same can be said for warmer currents. They originate at the equator and as they move away from the equator, they tend to get cooler. Port Nolith is located on the west coast of South Africa. The ocean current experienced here is very cold. On the other side of the country, we have Durban and the ocean current experienced here is very warm. Because of the different ocean current temperatures experienced, these places are likely to experience different temperatures too. The average summer temperature for Port Nolith is 21 degrees Celsius, compared to Durban, which is 29 degrees Celsius. Winter is vastly different too. Port Nolith averages at 20 degrees Celsius at the hottest time of the day while Durban averages at 24 degrees Celsius. Land and sea react very differently to heat. Land heats up quickly during the day, but also loses its heat very quickly at night. Whereas the sea takes quite a long time to heat up and is heated to quite a great depth because of the transparent nature of the sea. And this also means that the sea retains its heat for longer, especially during the night. So there's a slow release of heat compared to land where the heat escapes quickly. Therefore, inland areas tend to be very hot during the day and very cold at night. These areas have warmer summers and colder winters compared to places along the coast that lie at the same latitude. Along the coast, Temperatures tend to not get too hot or too cold. That is, they are moderate temperatures. Ocean temperatures remain more constant than land temperatures. So the ocean regulates the temperature of coastal places. 
Ocean temperatures remain more constant than land temperatures, and oceans are known to help regulate the temperature of coastal places. Coastal places are said to have a maritime climate, and this means that they are close to the sea. Places inland are said to have a continental climate. This means that there tends to be a very large temperature range between the summer and the winter temperatures. These places are also known to experience extreme weather conditions, be it a very, very hot day in summer or a very, very cold, frosty night in winter. George is located along the west coast of South Africa. George lies at zero meters or sea level. Beaufort West is about 250 kilometers inland from George. The main difference is that George's temperature is affected by the fact that it is close to the sea. And the same can be said for Beaufort West. Because it is so far from the sea, it is very likely to experience extreme temperatures in winter and even chances of snow. The chance of it snowing in George, zero to none. So Beaufort West is where it's all happening. Let's look abroad. Both London and Saratov in Russia lie at 52 degrees north of the equator. Yet, they both experience such different temperatures. Why is this? London is 50 kilometers above sea level and Saratov is 3000 kilometers above sea level. These factors will obviously affect their temperatures greatly. London's average winter temperature is minus three degrees Celsius, whereas Saratov's average winter temperature is minus 12 degrees Celsius. Relief is defined as the variations in elevation and slope of the surface of the earth. Relief can affect how much precipitation an area receives. When air is forced to rise over a mountain range, it cools and condenses. Clouds form and they produce rain. And this rain is known as orographic rainfall or relief rainfall. It rains mostly on the windward slopes. As air moves over the mountain range and starts to descend, it warms. As a result, rainfall is less on the leeward side of the mountain range and this side is known to be in the rain shadow. South African climate ranges from wet to humid to dry and even desert-like. Because of our coastal plain, escarpment and plateau, places around South Africa are bound to experience different temperatures. Try to consider all of these factors when analyzing a place. Thank you for tuning into this module. We hope that you have learned a lot.